Now, our next guests have amassed a total of 15 Olympic medals between them, 15, including 12 golds, three silvers. So We're that talking means... about Jason and Laura yeah. Kenny. They are officially Britain's most successful Olympians ever. <laughs> and there they are. Guys, good morning, good morning. and just respect. Congratulations. Respect to you. <laughs> Congratulations. Has it sunk in yet? Uh, no, not really. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, we literally got back yesterday, um, so we've not actually seen anyone other than our parents, so it kind of feels weird. Like, you don't really know how kind of people have taken it, I guess. So, well, you know, in the build-up to the Games, you're training every day, you're psyching yourselves up, you're in total preparation for all of this. Now it's done, now it's over, now you're home, what what happens now? Do you go to the supermarket or, <laughs> or do you get on a bike? What what happens? Yeah, um, back to normal life. It's funny because it is literally like you go from doing having everything done for you, like people are doing your washing, they're putting your bikes together for you. Well, they're saying a lot I mean, of the papers today, for both of you, golden couple, as you're being called, um, saying that you should become a knight and a dame to honour your record-breaking Olympic triumph. And that is in more than one newspaper today. How would you feel about that? What you said, I was. <laughs> <laughs> Any, um, like, honour... Um... It's a privilege, you know, like it's something that you don't chase. But obviously when it does happen, um, yeah, you feel, I don't know, yeah, you, it, it's just a massive honour. Like it would be an honour, yeah. And a massive honour to have all those medals. Um, and Jason, you are now the most successful Olympian of all time. I mean, that is quite some title, isn't it, on your shoulders? Yeah, yeah, it's good. That, it? yeah, it's, uh, it's a bit bizarre, it's just sort of happened by accident really I suppose we're just kind of concentrated on on one race at a time really and uh, and yeah just kind of kept kept flaring away and uh, and popped out the other side it's really special obviously because all the guys that are up there like Brad and Chris and and Steve Redgrave were kind of the people I was watching growing up so it's really nice to be kind of you know compared to them and be on the same page of those guys quite special really and of course your wife is way up there um too and Laura is it true that you either have or you plan to take your combined Olympic medals and make a big clock for the kitchen? Well, so we joked about it before, um, about, oh, maybe we should make one. And then literally the night before Jason wins the gear and he's like, oh, if we win one more, we could just do a clock of gold medals. <laughs> 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 so yeah, it's definitely an idea. <laughs> now, you're, you're smiling there and you're looking very, very happy, but you had disappointment in your, in your last race um, where, where we saw Jason break away from the field and just leave everybody standing or everybody in his wake there. It was like the Grant National for you at Beaches Brook. Uh, they all came down and, and you went with them. Yeah, I mean, I, I joked afterwards, you might as well end the season the way it started. I just thought, you know, like, it's, it's bike racing. And obviously, I was absolutely gutted because once that crash had happened, there was just no way I was ever going to win. Um, I might have been able to scrape a medal because um, obviously with the Omnium, the points total up. And once I ended up that far down, I was never going to make that amount of points back up. Um, so, yeah, it was a funny one. Like, when I went to bed that night, I was sat there and I was a little bit disappointed, even though... I'm sat with a gold medal. It, it was just a funny feeling to end on, I guess. Well, yes, and the way it ended, and you think, you know, the, the years of training you put in, and a very difficult year, of course, in lockdown, and your mum to, you know, your lovely son, Albie, who's only four. How have you managed to juggle, you know, being an elite athlete and being a mum with a four-year-old? I mean, I think it was harder than, I guess, I was anticipating. Um, you see loads of people do it. Like, Jessica Ennis Hill obviously was a massive inspiration for me. And I was lucky that I could actually speak to her, um, like, throughout my pregnancy and, like, the whole coming back from that. Um, and I, I must admit, when I went to the Olympics, like, you know how well you're going. Like, we do so much training day in, day out, that before we left, you sort of get um, a feeling of how you're going. And I thought there's just not a chance that I'm coming away with any medals. I just seemed like a different athlete on that holding camp, so like the two weeks prior to us leaving, to what I'd felt in London and in Rio. So when we won the Madison, honestly, it was just, I just felt completely overwhelmed because, like you say, to know that we've juggled being parents at home and then to go to the Olympics was just, yeah, Jason, insane, I guess. <laughs> J Jason, being parents, little I'll be, has Alby any other choice but to get on a bike? <laughs> <laughs> He's already been on a bike. You were the wonder coach that got him riding. So, uh, 
yeah, he, he's he's mega. He is. He, he took to it like a duck to water, but um, he he's not really interested, is he? he no, just... it's only hard. <laughs> he can he do it. Good. Like... He's good. He's just, he has a competitive bone in his body. It's weird. Like, <laughs> whereas we're really like, yeah, come on, come on. It's just like. Nah. And what yeah, he... he's so blase. What does he make of mum and dad? You know, has he got any concept of, of kind of the athletes I've you are? He's obviously you seen are. you on the two television, but how successful you are? No, not really. He thinks daddy's stronger than the Hulk and faster than the Flash. That's, that's all we've got. <laughs> that's good. And that's a good <laughs> well, enough a recommendation. Good but yeah. you were saying there, LB, hasn't really got much interest. Do you guys remember what stage you were, how old you were, when you thought, I'm good at this bike business? Uh, I was quite a lot older. I was about 13. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's obviously early days for RBS. Yeah, so I guess, you know, it's up to him, whatever he plans is doing. Uh, he might grow into being a bit competitive. Um, like, like, like Laura says, he's not competitive in the slightest at the minute. He's just on sports day at his nursery. And, uh, and he's sort of head in the clothes, doesn't he? Yeah, in our big world, <laughs> so, Jason, there you are, Britain's most successful uh, male and female Olympians, happen to be married as well. Um, for you, Jason, is that you done or is, is Paris in your sights, the next Olympics? Um, it, it's a potential, yeah. I think it's not really up to me, to be honest. I think I've kind of got to see, see who I am. I was kind of limping across the line a little bit in that last one. So I think it's, it's kind of more up to... Um, I have to sit down with the coaches and the physios and see if I can get back to a level where I can train consistently uh, and, and that we think I can be competitive. You know, I already wasn't the fastest at this last Games um, and I, I was, didn't, didn't have the kind of con condition that I wanted, really. So I sort of have to kind of make the choice now about whether it's realistic that I can kind of carry on uh, to be competitive and for another three years. Well, Jason, Jason has, has some doubts there, Laura. You're four years younger. Do you have any doubts about Paris? I mean, in a way, you're in the same boat. Like, it's not really down to us because, obviously, you have to get selected. Um, and with the event, like, always moving on. I mean, we saw that the 4K, like, in the team pursuit, um, the times are just getting quicker and quicker. And so it's just whether you can keep up with that. Um, I mean, I'd like to say, yeah, you'll see me in Paris, <laughs> but I've got to hope I'm good enough first. <laughs> Well, I'm sure you will be. Uh, we had Max Whitlock on um, a few days ago and he was saying he was really looking forward to having some naughty food because he'd been training so hard Pizzas. and really looking after himself. He was really looking forward to pizza. Was there anything that you were craving that you've been denying yourself? Yeah, I mean, we did already have a takeaway, didn't we, on the way? We, when we did the closing ceremony, I was just desperate for something salty. <laughs> so we did already have chips and chicken nuggets. <laughs> You know how to live, you two. Uh, will all that change when, when you become um, Sir Jason and Dame Laura? <laughs> no, we'll still be the same too, just like... Numpties. Yeah, living the low life. <laughs> living, <laughs> living the low life. Um, guys, really appreciate you finding time to talk to us today. It's been one yeah. big world. Whole country's very, very proud of you and uh, such lovely people to talk to as well. Thank you very yeah. much indeed for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome home. Off the supermarket now, Laura and Jason, yeah? Well, Jason, yeah. Already been at four <laughs> o'clock this morning. <laughs> oh, wow.